high-level Big 12 game tonight. Um, I'd like to thank our students for coming out. Our students came out in a big, big-time way for us. They were, they were huge tonight. Overflow section up top. Um, made a great environment tonight uh, in terms of having a home court. Longhorn Nation came out tonight and really support, supported us tonight in a big-time way. Uh, I thought our guys gave a great effort tonight against a, a, a really high-level team uh, in our league and in the country, well-coached. Um, we have a lot of respect for and, uh, you know, again, it's not, it's not enough for us trying to come close or have a more victory. We're not in it for more victories. We, we, we compete at the University of Texas to win, and, uh, and I know our guys tried to do that tonight at a, at a, at a very high level. Uh, no disappointment in their effort and their want to and the want to win tonight uh, at, at home. Um, but, uh, again, we'll keep working hard and keep trying to get better in this league. Uh, Max, the, 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 after the first half, what did y'all learn? Because you shot really well in the second half. What did you learn from that first half, and what did they do against you specifically, especially in overtime? Um, you know, that, I mean, it's a it's a good defensive team. I mean, we knew that coming in. Um, I thought in the second half we did a better job of um, kind of penetrating the gaps and um, and moving off the ball. Um, got us some easy looks, and um, you know we got some stops on the defensive end as well. Scott, front right. uh, Dylan, what did they do to kind of slow you down early in that game, and, and what did you have to do to adjust to that? Yeah, they were doing a, a good job of, of doubling the post um, and getting out of their coverages on pick and rolls very quickly. Um, so just trying to slip out of screens in the second half more um, and make them make a decision of whether they were going to stay with the guard um, or let the guard get downhill um, out of that pick and roll coverage. Joe, front line. Dylan, how much of a challenge was battling for rebounds on both ends tonight? Yeah, it was difficult for sure, um, but we knew um, that was going to be our biggest challenge coming into this game. Um, obviously, we didn't get it done, um, and that, that, that kind of cost us the game tonight. Sir, front right. Hey, Max, what makes um, Shed such a uh, tough cover for you guys? Um, I thought he did a, a good job of um, kind of playing off the pick and roll. Um, you know, he um, you know, likes to make reads off that. Um, you know, and I thought in the second half, um, we did a better job of, um, you know, trying to pressure him more um, and, and kind of keep the ball out of his hands. Eric Promo. Max, I know you also talked about Houston's defense. I wonder if you could just talk about specifically that last uh, layup attempt there with 13 seconds left. Just walk me through your thought process there and kind of what you saw out there. Um, yeah, I mean, um, I think it was 32 seconds to start that possession off. But um, just knew to, you know, get a shot, you know, at least with some time left. So if we missed and. Um, you know, have a chance for offensive rebound if not uh, foul. Caleb, middle up. <clears throat> Max, could you really feel the crowd tonight, especially in that second half, pushing you on on offense? And did it contribute at all to that um, run early in the second half? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, um, like Coach said, you know, thank you to the crowd. I mean, they were amazing. Um, we appreciate their support. And, um, you know, wanted to keep coming out. Um, and, and we're going to, um, you know, figure out what we need to do um, so we come out on top next time. Kirk, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Dylan, y'all have lost three games at home, but is this something y'all can build on because, you know, you took a team ranked in the top five in the nation to the limit? Yeah, I mean, obviously we don't want any – we don't really do the moral victory thing. Um, we're happy that we came out and we, we fought hard the entire game, and that's something that we've been looking for um, dating back to our, our first couple of losses in the 12. Um, so we're happy that, that we're fighting, but – we have to clean up the little details and the rebounding in order to come out with wins. Um, and that's all we're really worried about. We're not really trying to take a moral victory right now. Max, um, it looked like they were double teaming you, try, trying to take away your three-point shot up on the on the top. Second half, it seemed like you were pulling Francis out and then opening it up the middle for a Dylan or a, a Dylan or a, a, the other Dylan to go do a layup or a slam dunk. Was that something that you saw in the halftime that you adjusted for? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, coming into it, just um, kind of understanding that um, they'll try to keep two on me um, and, um, you know, kind of get the ball out of my hands. And so, um, you know, once I got two on me, kind of just uh, making the right read and then, you know, that, them playing from there. Joe, last one for the players. Max is someone who goes against them in practice, works by them. What does Kendall bring to this team on the defensive end? Because Coach Sampson was praising him as being – just a really athletic defender who knows how to play defense too. So what does he bring when he's able to do what he did tonight against Shed in the late minutes? Yeah, I mean, he's been, he's been big for us, um, you know, all year. Um, you know, even in practice, I mean, just to 
the energy he plays with, um, that, that defensive mentality that he plays with. Um, and, you know, he's, he's really just embraced his role um, and, and, you know, done it, you know, the best that he can. And, you know, he's been huge for us this year. <coughs> Dylan Max, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Raise hands. We'll bring the mic here for questions for Coach, please. <coughs> Joe starts off again, please. Rodney, when you see, you know, 47-36 on the boards and, you know, 15-8 on the offensive glass, is that, is that what you think was the, the difference in this game? Well, again, really well-coached team and Coach Sampson. His teams are really physical teams. They play really good defense. It's the best defensive team we played uh, this season. I mean, they're number one in almost every category, um, not only in the Big 12, but in the country. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, we've got a really good team. And, and I think, again, for us to be an excellent team, and I've said this to our team uh, after, uh, afterwards, we, we've given great effort over the last four games. Uh, the one thing that's just holding us back is, is second chance opportunities, you know, second chance points, to the glass, you know, in terms of the physical mindset, in terms of coming up with those defensive rebounds to close out possessions down the stretch. Um, you know, you, you, you know that, that's a big ammunition in terms of what Houston does. They, you know, they thrive on second chance opportunities. And when they were down six, you know, even in regulation, they, uh, they were able to get a couple big rebounds. And we call them money threes. They were able to get a money three. You know, and those were big shots and big possessions. But, you know, it's the next step for our team. You know, and I, I think, again, you know, if we're able to fix that, and which, you know, again, we're capable of doing that. And I'll do my part working with our guys to try to continue to get them better uh, in that regard and coach them that, on, in that aspect. Uh, but, but we will go from being a really good team to, I think, an, an excellent team. Because we, we, have, we have really good pieces. We have really good guys that want to win. And, uh, and I think, again, they gave us great effort tonight to try to do that. But, you know, two biggest keys in the game uh, against Houston is you got to rebound. You can't give them second chance opportunities, and then you have to take care of the basketball. We did a good job taking care of the basketball. We had ten turnovers, uh, and uh, you can win with ten or less turnovers. Uh, but uh, that was the one. That was the one key that they, that was the difference in the game. If you look across the board, uh, it's a glaring difference in the game. West got up front. Yeah, I mean, you look, you look at Houston, tallest players, six eight, a lot of six seven guys. What is it that makes them so good on the offensive rebounds? Because they're not sending extra guards in there. That's their, their front court, right? How many years ago Sampson been there at, uh, at Houston? I mean, that's what they do. You know, that's their, that's their, that's their culture. That's their DNA. Um, you know, we've scrimmaged them the last two years, uh, and, and it's a bloodbath. You know what I mean? And you have to uh, come into the game with the mindset that you're going you're gonna to be physical on the glass. You, you know, and a lot of times it's not about the size and 6'10", 6'11". It's got nothing to do with it. It's what's in your chest and how hard you want to go get it. And he does a great job of stealing in his guys. You know, and they're older. Those guys are older players, I mean. But he had a young player come in and, and play well, too, that's going to fit the DNA and their culture and stuff at 6'8". At Those guys, though, are 6'8", and they've got seven-foot wingspans. You know, so their their length is real, even though it's not 6'10", 6 6'11". 6 they've, got, they've got wingspan that's seven foot. But they do a great job of, cl of constantly crashing and coming to the glass. It's going to be a physical game when you play Houston. It's teams at Oklahoma were always physical teams, you know, but, uh, you know, that's their culture. That's what they do at a very high level, elite level. Eric, RT, I know this may get buried in the loss, but uh, in the last 10 minutes of regulation, Dylan Mitchell, I believe he had 10 points, a couple boards, uh, a block, a steal. Is that the best stretch of basketball you've seen Dylan play it's concerning the opponent? Yeah, you know, Dylan's playing well, you know, uh, you know, Again, he's in he's in a whole different role this year, especially at winning time and and uh, learning through uh, through wins and losses what it takes to get it done down the stretch and how pivotal it is for him to continue to stay on the glass force, you know, all the way through. And uh, but I thought he played terrific. I thought he was really good, crashing the glass force, uh, you know, getting extra possessions for us, uh, and then sitting down trying to guard, you know, and stuff. So, you know, uh, a year's difference in terms of his physical mindset. He's continued to grow every single day. Set front writer. Hey, RT, you coached, you coached TJ Ford, DJ Augustine, so you've had poised point guards that made big shots. Shed pulled them off the off the rack because you had them against the ropes there up six. Uh, how important is it to have an old, experienced guard that can do that? Yeah, Shed's tough, man. He's a tough-minded guard. You know, he's an older player that's – been in that program, he's gonna probably leave as the all-time winning one of the all-time winningest player uh, in their program. So 
He knows what winning's about. He's won at a high level, and uh, he made big winning plays down the stretch. You know, we tried to take him out. Uh, I thought Kendall did a really good job of really denying him the ball uh, down the stretch and making someone else try to beat us down the stretch. And, uh, um, you know, give him credit. He made some big plays and uh, uh, some winning plays. Sat down and guarded really hard. But, you know, he's been a part of winning at the highest level. He's played in the Final Four. He's played in the Elite Eight. You know, so he understands what goes into winning. And uh, he plays his role at a, at a very high level. Coach, how much is that bad back nagging at, at Caden, and how's it affecting him the most? I think he's gotten better over the last, give or take, you know, week and a half, two weeks. He's gotten better, and and uh, he's playing with a uh, uh, a mindset to where he's not really worrying about it, just trying to go out and compete, and uh, you know, still have some physicality and do things. So, you know, again, I think he's getting better, and I think our training staff done a good job, you know, mending him and. Uh, you know, keeping him in a uh, in a positive direction moving forward. John, you're on the front right. Coach, you talk about the guys taking the next step and crashing the glass and all that thing. What do, what do you do to get them to do that? Because I'm sure it's something you're preaching already. Yeah, no, again, you know, you can't – I mean, we play two games here against two high-level teams, well, you know, two two different type of teams, contrast to play. Uh, you, know, you play a, a BYU team that, you know, that's uh, – Really offensive oriented. I mean, they're gonna really try to score the basketball. Um, you know, they've been shooting a lot of threes, and they really attacked us in the paint. Played more physical than you really kind of give them credit for doing offensively. Um, and then you come back and you play Houston. You know, just a rugged, tough team that's gonna guard you really hard and and challenge you on the glass every night. You know, you can't come back and beat your guys up. Not this time of year. Um, you know, we're in the weight room. To try to have a physical mindset. Um, you know, but uh, at the end of the day, it gets down to really kind of want to and understand how important it is for us to take the next step to be able to do that. You know, we have to have that mindset that we're going to make contact, you know, in every possession. And we've gotten better. We've gotten better over the course of the season, and uh, we will continue to get better and we'll, uh, you know, continue to try to, to watch tape. But this time of year, you just can't, you can't go in and try to beat your guys up. And, you know, we need our guys to be healthy and fresh and, playing their best basketball this time of year. So, you know, you learn a lot through tape. You learn a lot through just, uh, you know, trying to instill in our guys how important it is to, 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 to winning at this level and in this league. Three, four last ones, Kirk, in the middle, please. Yeah, Rodney, to, to that point, this league is so tough. And, you know, you can have great momentum winning two games like you did against Baylor and Oklahoma, and then the last two have been so tough. Does, is it where on the team emotionally? Do you worry about that as far as keeping their spirits up? No, you know what, I think, uh, you know, I was asked that earlier today by the media group doing the game today, and I think a lot of it is predicated on your on your leadership. I think uh, if I come in and I'm moping around and poor me and, you know, feeling sorry for myself or where we are right now, we're not going to be the team that I think we have a chance to be by the end of this year. You know, so I think, you know, team's going to feed off what I bring to the table every day. If I come in, I'm positive, I'm upbeat. We got a lot of basketball to be played in this league. You know, we can we can compete with anybody in this league at home or on the road every night. That's what you have to have this time of year, you know. And, you know, I have to practice what I preach, you know. And I try to bring that every single day, you know. And, again, I still think this team has a high ceiling. I just said to our two best players, I still think we can be as good as we want to be this year. We have a good team. We just got to take the next step. We got to be completely bought in. And we got to stay the course. Can't listen to any outside noise. We control our own destiny in terms of what we do and how we do it the rest of the way. But I think a lot of it is predicated on myself and how I carry myself and and uh, and how I respond to wins and losses and everything. So that's that's where I put it. I don't put it on our guys. I put it on myself. Corey, back camera Yeah, Coach, at the end of the game when they put that 1.7 back on the clock, what was the conversations in the huddle? Well, I mean, it's not a lot of time. I mean, you, you got a couple of options. I mean, you could – you can throw the, uh, we call it home run, or Kristen Lakeman play. You can do that. You know, the only problem with that is a spot play. And you know, i got to have a guy that can really deliver that pass at an elite level. If they put a big guy on the ball, you get a deflection, or you have a problem with the inbounds and of any type, ball's right there, and they get the ball to win the game underneath the basket. So, 
you got to make a decision. Do you want it, that type of play or do you want to try to get one of your guys on the move and see if we can't get downhill and give him a chance? And uh, we elected to go with trying to get one of our guys downhill. We put it in Max's hands, and he got to half court. <laughs> he got to half court. And uh, he's a guy that, you know, he works on his half court shots, and they shoot him a lot and stuff as well. So he got a good run to start. We call that loop. And uh, he got a good start. He got a good look and a good opportunity to get down there to, to get a good look at it, you know, and stuff. So um, can't fault that, that, that opportunity, you know. Wish we hadn't been in that situation, but but nevertheless, we had a chance to try to get downhill to get something done, and we got him right to half court. <laughs> um, Coach, uh, in the second half, you scored 40 points as opposed to 25 in the first. Uh, what adjustments did you – see your team make that allowed y'all to be successful scoring wise? Well, again, Coach Sampson, they've been doing this a long time and they're, they're elite in the country at uh, taking one of our strengths away. We're really good at putting the ball in the paint, you know, but they're, they're elite at taking the ball out of the paint. So, you know, um, we know going in right away they're going to try to take one of our strengths away. We try to play inside out. We put the ball inside and play through our inside players a lot. Uh, and, and let our in, let our perimeter players play off off our uh, inside guys, but we knew going in tonight that they were gonna you know do a good job. They're the best in the country at monster, you know, trapping you in the post, making you get that ball out of the paint. Um, they uh, again, you know, first half they did a great job of really, you know, at the end of the day they make you play space. You got to space those guys out, and you have to be willing to drive them. They're elite level shot blocking team one of the best, best shot blocking teams in the country. We missed a lot of bunnies, though. We had a lot of shots at the rim early in the first half. We missed a lot of shots at the basket at the rim. You know, we missed some late at the rim as well, you know, and stuff. And, you know, give them credit. We know coming coming into the game, it was going to be a two-foot play, shot fake game because they're an elite-level shot blocking team. But, but um, you know, they caused a lot of problems. They, you know, they – they they really try to protect the paint, the physical. Um, it's the reason why they're number one in every category defensively in the you know, in our league and stuff. But I thought we uh, we did a much better job in the second half, just really getting downhill, finishing plays at the basket, crashing the glass, getting second chance opportunities. I thought we moved the ball really well. We had 19 assists tonight, 10 turnovers. We, we, we strive for 18 or more every game. So, you know, again, the glaring, you know, stat in the game, when you look across the board, was the rebounding piece. They got a second-chance points tonight. And, and down the stretch, they got second-chance baskets, which was huge for them. And it's a big part of their offense. They, they put it on the glass, and, and they go get it, you know, and stuff. So um, I thought we did a pretty good job of all that in the second half, that we played, played pretty well. We would have had more points in the first half, we just missed a lot of easy layups. We, you know, Dylan Mitchell missed the dunk right at the rim. You know, we had opportunities around the basket early in the first half. And against really good defensive teams, you got to make those point blanks. Two last ones, Joe and Fun. With Kendall, he's come a long way in these past couple games. But how much of a, of a luxury is it that you can literally have him shadow a guy and and be, have faith that he's going to be able to live up to every responsibility that entails? Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that uh, we count on defensively to, to really, you know, really give us a lot of toughness from a defensive standpoint, you know. But we also think he's a guy that can score the ball and get to the basket as well, you know, even late in the game. You know, he's come this far in the season right now to where, you know, it's all about matchups down the stretch. You know, we call timeout and we still don't need a three. We just need to get downhill. And, you know, he's one of our better drivers to get downhill. And we get the matchup we want. With the, with the guy that we wanted to go at with him guarded, guarding him, you know, Shed's going to guard Max, you know, Cryer's guarding Tyrese. And, uh, you know, we're trying to get to the basket against Sharp, and, you know, we weren't able to get there. But it's the matchup we wanted, and he's a guy that we have a lot of confidence that could get downhill and is athletic enough to get to the basket, give Sharp a lot of credit. He moved his feet, stayed in front of him, and he wasn't able to get downhill. And stuff, but it was the matchup we wanted, you know. And had Shed been a younger player, and not helped off Max, then he's got a driving kick opportunity, as well as an opportunity to get downhill to the basket, get foul, try to get to the foul line, 
and stuff like that. But uh, he's uh, he's become a weapon for us both offensively and defensively. Hey, Ronnie, I'm kind of going off of Joe's question. Uh, where do you see Kendall's game growing from here? And do you feel like he's becoming a more polished player? You know, Kendall's going to be one of those guys that continues to grow in our program at a high level. You know, he's, he's a guy that plays with incredible energy and effort on both ends of the floor. Even when he's making mistakes, he's making them going hard and uh, big-time competitor. But, you know, you'll see him grow over the course of his career here at Texas. You know, he'll be a guy that – you know, that will shoot the ball. I think he'll become a pretty good shooter as well. You know, it'll be something that he'll work really hard on this spring, this summer, and become a really good shooter. I think his ball handling this spring and summer will be uh, will be something that will take another another step for him as well. And, you know, I think he'll continue to grow and be a really good player in our program. Thanks, Alvin. Appreciate it. Thank you.